sunshine helps protect your health. And we're back again with six weeks to wellness with Jan Fitzpatrick of InVibeHealth.com, and we're talking about loving the skin you're in. This is uh, our four-part series on that theme, and Jan is getting us a little surprised here because we hear so many negative things about the sun. So sunshine helps protect your health. Jan, tell me a little bit about what we're going to cover here, and then we'll we'll get into it. Oh, well, very often we're told to avoid going out in the sun without sunscreen. Uh, did you know that this may be harmful advice for most people? No. <laughs> <laughs> Many people consider sun exposure to be as critical to your health as breathing clean air and drinking pure, fresh water. Hmm. All right. Well, you have got my attention, Jan. So uh, just to run down the uh, the points that we're going to focus on. So we're going to talk about that there are so many benefits and so little time. We're going to talk about that uh -huh. everything is better with some vitamin D and mm -hmm. that uh, you need to step away <laughs> from the sunscreen. So this is going to be yes. interesting, Jan. This is You're, you're yeah. being counterculture here. So tell me about the benefits and the time. Well, we are uh, one big solar collector. Um, our bodies, our skin, collects uh, sun energy, it absorbs it, and it also stores it. And some of the things, and I just wrote them down so that you would, um, so they kind of counter that balance for what you usually hear. Right. There are seven things, big things, that uh, benefits that the sun does for us. It uh, initiates vitamin D production, it's pain killing, it has analgesic properties, it increases subcutaneous fat metabolism yes mm, that's good it, uh, the daytime <laughs> yes daytime sun exposure improves evening alertness mm. and conversion it actually helps with the conversion to me metabolic energy that is and this is exactly what you just got done saying we may ingest energy directly from the sun like plants do wow so we are we and, do photosynthesize yeah. <laughs> yep it helps in the production of nitric oxide, which is a compound that lowers your blood pressure. Mm. And it helps with the regulation of human lifespan. In other words, solar cycles appear to be able to directly affect the human genome, thereby influencing your lifespan. Fascinating. So I'm yeah. assuming, Jan, though, that you're not you know, recommending that we, we you know, go out and burn our skin. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's not that no, no, much sun, right? <laughs> no, no. Well, it's called uh, safe sunning. Yeah. Safe, safe sunning. Okay, I like that. Safe sunning. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So lots of benefits. That's you know at least seven of them, and it's uh, it's a little yeah. counter to what you typically hear, and probably from people who are trying to sell you some sunscreen, right? <laughs> oh, probably yes. <laughs> So tell uh -huh. me about vitamin D. I, I, I am aware that, you know, sunshine, you know, gets you the vitamin D and that people don't get enough sun and that's why, you know, they kind of create all the supplements and milk and things like that, right? Uh, you touched on a lot of things that I'm not going to <laughs> okay. all right. talk about today, but um, everything is better with vitamin D. And the way I first heard about vitamin D um, was through a group called grassrootshealth.net and they have been doing crowdsourcing for a long time and getting you uh, each all of us we can get on the website we order a kit for vitamin D we tell and uh, fill out a survey on all of our life uh, habits and especially how much we're supplementing with vitamin D itself and they've collected all of this information over time with real people and they have actually come up with some suggestions and also on how much you should be taking and how much uh, how to increase your levels of vitamin D through supplementing hmm. okay yeah but do you remember how the whole vitamin D thing started it was really to pre prevent rickets right right it was, wasn't it mm -hmm. so it was uh... Was it people at sea or something like that? No, I'm, uh, that, no, that was something else. That was the other one. That was but, why they, but, they right. They had a, they brought citrus with them. That that was vitamin C, yeah. not vitamin D. Okay. Yeah, that was a little bit different. But the old levels uh, were set at 20 nanograms per milliliter, and the only thing that that does 
is prevent rickets. Okay. Which so is that was the minimum. that was the main thing they were focusing on, and yeah. you don't see too many people with uh, with rickets. Uh, you know, the, no. the way it was yeah. back in those days. So. I went to high school. Yeah, I went to high school with a set of twins that had rickets. Okay. So it's not that much in the past. Yeah, so it's um, still, still around, but. Yeah. Well, Grassroots Health has through their their real live crowdsourcing has come up with recommended serum levels of 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. That's like three times what uh, prevents rickets. And if you do have a serum level of that high, um, you're able to prevent a majority of disease. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, and we that get, important. We get vitamin D right from the sun as well, right? I mean, that's part of... Uh, well, it changed, yes. Yes, it does. When we're out there, it changes the sterol that's in our skin um, to what we can use. Excellent. Okay. To vitamin D3. Uh, but we aren't outside that much anymore. Right. Who's, who's, you know, works in the, we're inside, we're under fluorescent lights. Um, and when you live in the northern climate, you cannot get enough sunshine between November and February. It's just not possible. Uh, and what we do during the summer is to, you know, I told you we're a big solar collector. Well, in the northern climates, we need to be out collecting as much solar energy as possible because that's what gets us through the winter. And if you've known anybody who has maybe thyroid problems or anything that their met metabolism is really slowed down in the winter time, or even their emotions are affected. Hmm. They're not getting enough sunshine. So it's like we have to really expose as much, store as much, and then we'll use it throughout the winter and hopefully not run out before spring and summer come <laughs> when we can go back outside and the sun is a lot stronger. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, sunscreen. Tell me about sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Step away from the sunscreen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you may be relieved to know, especially since you don't have any protection on top. That is right. <laughs> mm -hmm, that natural protection, I should say. That melanoma is not actually caused by sun exposure. Some of the other carcinomas are, but not melanoma. And melanoma has been seen or is now thought of to be a symptom of not getting enough sun exposure. Now that I have never heard. So interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's just the new stuff that's coming out. Okay. As we learn more and study more. So and not, we did talk about this before. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And we did talk about a little, little bit. Get into the safe sun exposure. Mm -hmm. um, if you get your sun before ten o'clock, go for a walk before ten o'clock, and after three o'clock, you probably are all right, unless you know there are certain things that your doctor or health professional may have told you about your skin in particular. Um, but most people, 95% of people, can go out be you know, before 10 and after 3 and not have to worry about um, putting, you know, protecting themselves. But if you do have to go out, you can do several things. Wear protective clothing. There are some, there are some clothing that's actually rated for you know, SPF. Right, You've probably right. seen that before yeah. for people who work outside. Um, wear your sunglasses to protect, protect your eyes um, if it's between 10 and 3, and wear a hat. Mm -hmm. It's good to protect the crown of your head. <laughs> I, uh, I never go out without one from unless if, if I'm going to be out for more than ten I, I, minutes. Uh, yes, uh, we follically challenged folks definitely need uh, a little cover. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. And according to the um, the group Environmental Workers Group or EWG.org, they study a lot of the cosmetics that we have. Um, and they are saying that safe sunscreen, and there is such a thing, um, they tell us to avoid three components that, that may be in our sunscreen. And one of them is oxybenzone, which is a hormone disruptor, hmm. synthetic frag fragrances, and it's called retinal palmitate, and that is known to be connected with cancer. Hmm. So you want to avoid anything that has those three things in it. I will have to check my labels. Oh, please do, please do. <laughs> and and the good. Do you remember a long time ago when the um, the lifeguards at the pool used to have white noses? Right, right. That was like zinc mm -hmm. oxide or something like that. that yeah, they would yeah. Paint down their noses. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and that's safe sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Anything with zinc or titanium-based mineral ingredients, they block the sun without penetrating our skin. So, right. <laughs> yeah, they were doing just the right thing. You just have to be okay with a big white nose, right? <laughs> That's it. The, most of the sunscreens, it's not that thick anymore, so right. you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> it's like house paint, because uh, that's what they used to look yeah. like. <laughs> yes. All right, so we have safe sunscreens, we have safe mm -hmm. levels of exposure, uh, you know, uh, and we don't necessarily have to avoid every moment of sun because maybe that's oh, no. way too much. Uh, you know, we've, we're going in the wrong direction, perhaps. Okay. All right. So step away exactly. from the sunscreen. So we're in the midst of our four-part series here all about, you know, love the skin you're in. So what we've been talking about today is that sunshine actually does have protective health benefits. It's not just an mm -hmm. evil, you know, solar radiation <laughs> source that's trying to cook you. And we talked about that there are so many benefits in so little time. We talked about that vitamin D is a very important part of your health. And we've talked about the fact that, you know, there's important things to consider about sunscreen, whether, you know, whether you're looking what's in it. Uh, I'm going to definitely check my labels for what yeah. uh, you were talking about there and uh, looking for healthier kinds mm -hmm. of it. So if you're liking this information, if you like your skin, if you'd like to love the skin you're in, then you want to join us to, for the remaining parts of this series. And you do that by coming over to invibehealth.com and getting connected with Jan Fitzpatrick there. She has her book that's available on Amazon, but if you click it on the website there and you uh, join the mailing list, you get the book for free. So you can't quite beat that price, can you? So sign up, get the book for free, get all the great information that's at invibehealth.com. We have many of these video series that we've done and we've got more to come. And we've got lots yeah. and lots of blog posts. Jan is an avid blogger and has great information for you. So you know, get connected at invibehealth.com and join us for the third part of Love the Skin You're In. So I'll see you then, Jan. Thanks.